Boeing was once seen as evenly matched with SpaceX in the race to launch NASA astronauts, but fell behind due to development setbacks. Sadly, a recent report revealed that Starliner's spaceship growing pains have cost Boeing nearly $700 million more than planned. Why is the cost overrun? How does this affect Boeing? And with this situation, does Boeing have any chance to beat SpaceX? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. In the company's second quarter financial report, Boeing absorbed a charge in relation to its Starliner spacecraft program. This brings Boeing's Starliner cost overrun tally to $688 million due to numerous problems. The company did not elaborate on the specific issues that caused the charge and only briefly mentioned the program during an earnings call with financial analysts dominated by the company's commercial airliner programs. It was important. It was an emotional up for all of us at Boeing to get back on track, David Calhoun, president and chief executive of Boeing, said in the call, referring to the OFT-2 test. He later called the mission a pivotal and emotional test for the Boeing company, and we feel good about it, and we're ready for the crewed flight. Despite that, we all know the nearly $700 million cost overrun that the Boeing Starliner has created is due to two high-profile misses during its first two flights. The company took a $410 million charge in January of 2020, a month after the original and unsuccessful orbital flight test mission, to cover the costs of investigating the problems and flying a second mission. OFT-2's first launch attempt didn't get better for Boeing's bottom line. The company took an additional $185 million charge against earnings in October of 2021 after a valve problem delayed the OFT-2 launch last August. Boeing had to spend several months attempting to free the valves and determine a fix. To get OFT-2 to launch, Boeing replaced the service module set for Starliner's future crewed flight test mission hardware. Finally, OFT-2 launched on May 19th of 2022, completing its mission to dock to the ISS and return safely to Earth. Obviously, the years of delays and development problems have added up to a $100 million cost overrun. NASA paid Boeing almost $5 billion to develop Starliner for the agency compared to SpaceX's roughly $3 billion. But take a look at the results. How disappointing. Although the spacecraft finally reached the ISS, Boeing has yet to launch an operational crew using Starliner. Meanwhile, SpaceX has launched seven crewed missions to date, including two for private astronauts. Luckily, the six-day OFT-2 mission in May was largely successful, with no major issues reported during the spacecraft's launch, docking with the ISS, and return to Earth. That leaves us with an open possibility of proceeding with Starliner's first flight with astronauts on board, called the Crew Test Flight, or CFT, before the end of the year. You saw the Starliner dock with the ISS setting the stage for the crew flight test later this year. And achieving the domestic redundancy that is so important to the ISS mission, John Mulholland, Vice President and Program Manager for the ISS at Boeing said in remarks on July 26th at the ISS Research and Development Conference here. NASA has announced on June 16th that CFT will fly two astronauts, SUNY Williams and Butch Wilmore, rather than the three originally planned to fly the mission. Williams was moved up to CFT from Starliner 1, the first operational Starliner mission. Nicole Mann, who has originally been assigned to CFT, was reassigned last year to SpaceX's Crew-5 mission launching in September. Mike Fink, also previously assigned to CFT, will train as a backup for CFT and be available for future flight assignments. The CFT mission, NASA announced then, will last two weeks after proposing earlier to keep it at the station for up to six months. A two-week mission, the agency said, is sufficient to meet all NASA and Boeing test objectives for CFT, and a longer stay is not needed since Crew Dragon is now handling crew rotation missions. If CFT is successful, Starliner could start operational missions as soon as the fall of 2023 after the SpaceX Crew-6 mission launching in the spring of 2023. That will be the first of six missions under its Commercial Crew Transportation Capabilities, or CCT-CAP contract, awarded in 2014. 
However, even if Boeing were to launch Starliner's crew flight test by the end of 2022, that could be delayed if the company looks to redesign the valves that caused OFT2's pause. Mark Nappy, Boeing Vice President and Commercial Crew Program Manager stated in a media briefing in May that a valve redesign is definitely on the table, and once we get all the information that we need, we'll make that decision. Notably, the seven flights left on Boeing's manifest for NASA will be it for Starliner if the company doesn't find another customer. Unlike SpaceX, Boeing won't be getting any more flights ordered by NASA to shuttle its astronauts to and from the space station. Boeing has stated its plan to sell spare seats on NASA crewed flights to interested parties, but nothing has been announced as to who that might be. Another possible form of revenue would be to partner with one of the upcoming commercial space stations in development. For now, NASA is determined to support Boeing and Starliner for operational use as they believe redundancy is essential for commercial crew's success. Any partnership with a future commercial space station is still a decade away. In other news, NASA's epic Artemis 1 moon mission on a space launch system mega rocket is just a month away, at least if all goes according to plan. NASA is currently targeting launch for no earlier than Monday, August 29th at 8.33 a.m. EDT during a two-hour window. With approximately one month until NASA's first launch attempt for the Artemis 1 mission, teams move closer to finishing operations for the SLS rocket and Orion spacecraft in the Vehicle Assembly Building, or the VAB, at the agency's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. According to the latest update, engineers successfully reconnected the hydrogen tail service mast umbilical where a hydrogen leak was detected during the last wet dress rehearsal test. Teams tested the connection and did not detect any leaks under ambient conditions in the VAB. Additionally, teams are also replacing the inflatable seal between the mobile launcher's crew access arm and Orion's launch abort system after it experienced some minor damage due to inclement weather sustained while it was out at Launch Pad 39B for the wet dress rehearsal tests. The seal prevents anything from the outside environment from getting inside the capsule. Once the seal is replaced and tested, engineers will finish installing remaining payloads inside the crew module before SLS and Orion roll back out to the pad for launch. However, regardless of the team effort, the August 29th target date is not set in stone, as the Artemis 1 team must meet a variety of checkouts and other milestones to make it happen. In fact, according to NASA, August 29th is just one of three placeholder dates in an upcoming Artemis 1 launch window, along with September 2nd and September 5th. Most likely, a formal target will likely be nailed down a week or two before that window opens. And with that, my time is up. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.